Hey guys, what's up? Today I wanted to do a video over the settings in the Litchi app. I haven't made a uh, settings video in a long time, and the last one I did, eh, it didn't really go over too well because I was highly annoyed, but this time I'm in a better mood. But if you want to just run standard waypoint missions, fly around, and all that without bumping into any problems, I'll show you how to get your app set up and we'll uh we'll be able to fly from there first thing we need to do is hook up our phantom to the app so let's get into that right now and all right guys so this is what it looks like when you first open up litchy so let's go ahead and go up to the top right corner in our settings menu and let's just go through these settings real quick one by one first one is units uh, over here in the states, it's Imperial. Everywhere else, they like to use the metric system. Show battery voltage, I like to have that one turned on. Show home orientation, I like to have that one turned on as well. Uh, GPS coordinates, that's up to you. Uh, map type, I like hybrid because I like to see the actual satellite view and the streets on my map. Uh, map auto zoom, I've got that turned on. That's default. Map safe area radius. This is an important one. I've got mine set to 25,000 feet. I can't remember what it comes set uh, as default, but I know it's not very far. If you're doing a long waypoint mission or even a one way waypoint mission, say if you're going to uh, fly a few miles down a country road. You want to have that cranked up before you have, before you uh, plot out your mission. That way you won't get any error messages saying that your mission exceeds the map safe area radius. So that's the main reason I have that one set uh, 25,000 feet away. That way I won't bump into any of those headaches while I'm setting up my uh, waypoint missions. Find my aircraft in case you happen to lose your uh, lose your drone. You click that, and that records the last reported GPS coordinate of the drone. Reset all settings if you want to go back to defaults. Help that'll take you to Litchie's website to where you can download the manual. Um, and then the rest is just information. Let's go into camera. Auto record. I, I, I like to tell it. I like to tell my drone when to record. I don't like it recording automatically. Uh, video format. If you're an Apple person, go ahead and select that move file MOV. If you're a PC and Android user, you want MP4. Anti flickers auto. Show camera controls. Yes. Uh, histogram. That's up to you if you want it or not. I'm good without it. Grid lines, I do like to have just the standard grid. So I know if my uh, horizon's tilted or not. Uh, and then you have format SD card at the bottom. In case you like to clean that out before you go flying every time. Now let's go to aircraft. Go home altitude. Now say you lose... Uh, connection with your controller while you're flying it runs out of battery or it just craps out whatever you want it to be able to clear any obstacles that may be between you and the drone whenever it starts to fly back on its own that's why I have mine set up to 239 feet just to be sure that it's going to clear everything in the areas that I usually fly in maximum altitude that's uh, common sense below 400 dynamic home point that tells the drone that the home point is the actual device that's connected to your controller that you're flying with versus the takeoff point being the home point so the place where the uh, drone took off from if you're going to be doing a let's say a one-way waypoint mission and you're going to take off from one place and then go down the street and recover it somewhere else. You might want to do a dynamic home point. That way it knows where you are in case anything happens. 
signal loss behavior for manual flying. I believe it comes defaulted to hover. And that wouldn't be a very good deal if you lose connection with the controller and it decides that, okay, well, I don't have connection, so I'm just going to stay where I'm at and hover until I regain connection. That's not very good. Uh, landing, that means that it would start landing as soon as it loses uh, connection. That wouldn't be good either because, you know, God knows what it's going to land on if you're not in that area. Uh, but I just have it set to return to home. That seems to be the safest one. Calibrate compass. I've mentioned before in other videos that I don't calibrate before I fly every time. I know a lot of people do. I think that's just silly if you're not traveling, you know, several, several miles away between flights. So I'll only calibrate if I've traveled a long way or uh, bumped the phantom around pretty hard or whatnot. Log flights, yes, I like the log flights. That way, in case something, I get errors or whatever, I can uh, upload to air data and see what's going on. Air data UAV sync photo video previews, I've got that selected to none. I don't want to cache anything to my phone or the internet. I just like having all my stuff on the SD card and that's where it lives until I tell it to get out. Auto takeoff and follow mode, I think that's defaulted on. Um, I never go into follow mode, so I'm not worried about that. Maximum location accuracy, I've got that set to 25 feet, and I believe what that does is when you're flying a waypoint mission, say if it's really windy outside and that thing's having to fight to stay on its uh, original flight path, the lower your location accuracy is, the tighter it's going to stay to that flight path. So that said, if it's really windy and it's having to fight, it'll just be having to fight even harder to stay within that 25 feet. So you'll actually lose a bit more battery when flying a uh, waypoint mission and super windy conditions, but it's also safer to have that thing as close to the flight path as possible, especially if you're flying between trees or b between uh, any kind of obstacles. You want it to be as accurate as possible. Uh, gimbal mode, y'all follow. That's, um, that's the default and that's good. That's what you want. Uh, gimbal extension, that's so you can tilt the gimbal looking up higher I like to have that on gimbal gesture control that's on uh, for some reason it's not working that great on my uh, new phone the LG G6 here so it uh, I really don't use that anyways I just use the controller the turn wheel use legacy pano mode that's off uh, front aircraft LEDs I keep that off just to conserve my battery let's go into speech speech I have that enabled but I, had, I only have it enabled for warnings I don't have it enabled for any of the feedback and that's because I don't need the litchy voice telling me every 10 seconds or whatever it is how high or far away or how fast my drone's flying I can look at that on the on screen display down at the bottom left but I do have the warnings turned on so I have it warning me if it drops below 25% and I have it uh, warning me if my satellite count drops below 6 Because if the satellite count drops low, you'll start losing your uh, GPS accuracy. And that's something that I want to know about. So let's go to keys. Keys. Now this is all for your higher end DJI products that have actual buttons that you can map out on your controller and all that. Um, I'm running a Phantom 3 standard, so we've got a pretty basic controller to work with. And I, I won't be able to use any of these with mine. But I'm sure there's other videos if you're looking how to set those uh, buttons and switches. 
I'm sure there's other videos that'll show you in depth how to work those or how to program those. So just be keeping an eye out. But these should be the basic settings that you need to have in order to fly manually or do, um, do any waypoint mission or whatnot. So yeah, that's all I've got for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and smash that like button if I helped you any and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.